We have a we have the little red light has just come on and this is episode three or meeting three because we just turned it into a, uh, an episode but it really is a meeting of solve where um based on the uh, better it slack channel and our uh, linkedin group um uh, we get together on a every other friday and we talk about um topical things that have uh, that we're working on over the last uh, couple of weeks and we've got regular people here today to to discuss um the one thing that i'm assuming is on everybody's mind which is uh, business continuity so you know from having chats before and dominic rose um and some of the others i'm sure everybody has been every company has naturally has a business continuity plan if you don't have a business continuity or dr plan you know this is a safe space and certainly there can all be discussions about you know uh, how do you write one how do you test one how do you adapt one um so uh I, I will be honest that you know we do have a dr plan and a business continuity plan you know we have been working on you know revising it improving it um you know making sure all of those checks and balances are in place um has everybody else's week been busy preparing for what possibly could be wide scale uh remote working obviously we're talking about the the uh, corona uh, covid-19 virus this week Sean I, I sure have yeah i'm actually uh, in the process of writing up a uh, policy uh for the company that i'm going to present to the cto and let him do whatever he does with it um in before we're able to have like a strong official policy i've just been telling everyone take your laptops home every night and if you don't have a spare charger at home take your charger home every night that's yes. the so far boots on the ground that's the best advice i've just been like obviously if you feel yeah. sick stay home wash your hands yeah. all that stuff too but from an it standpoint make sure you can still work wherever you are if you can't come into work the next day yeah yeah i think i'm sure who is uh blah, 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 can't speak properly been uh gone too many calls today already is everybody else doing something as standard as that of reminding staff to take their computers at home and their power supply and maybe their headsets? Oh, shoot, we forgot about the headsets. <laughs> this is why these calls are good. Um, <laughs> in, uh, and this is, you know, this is brilliant because we, you know, we need to have uh, a community drafted playbook um, mm -hmm. because, you know, we're all going to, we're all going to forget something, or you know, we're all going to have uh, the same sort of needs to to support our users. Headsets is a great call out. I didn't have that on my list. Um, one other thing, I just dropped in the SaaS Ops uh, Better Cloud IT channel. Uh, Coinbase uh, made public their response. Uh, I found it really good. Yes. Yeah. I uh, did. Everybody else see that? I saw it. It uh, was posted on. Uh, on LinkedIn, I was quite impressed that they had made that that communication a public open doc. I mean, I think a lot of that stuff is important too, because some of these companies, uh, you know, especially the startup ones and things like that, have never faced anything like this. Um, you know, if they're fairly young or fairly immature, and so. It's risky to do something like that, right? It's it's risky for Coinbase to do that, but I think you know there is value in it. There's definitely value in it for um, yeah. people who have no idea where to start, and this was just kind of dumped in their lap this week or you know this month. So I know we've got people. I know I see Steve's joined. I know he's up in Chicago. I'm sure they must have had work from home days due to the call. I don't know where you you other guys are um i know in in my experience you know we've gone through hurricane sandy we've gone through um you know having an office in manhattan where there was you know no power for a large part of the island uh, our office did lose power but it was it wasn't a problem because everything was in g suite um has, has anybody gone through these sort of big business continuity dr plans before 
Uh, yeah, so I have. Yeah. Um, I implemented this when I was actually in the UK, and we had a, you know, we were running the uh, the call centers for the for the Get Taxi service there. So we had a lot of, you know, twenty four seven reliance on our systems and everything. So we had a full kind of remote, uh, you know, remote location uh, DR plan where, you know, if our building was inaccessible, how how our call center staff would be able to access systems and work remotely from home or some other location that we might uh, have for them. And then, uh, you know, now where we're at, uh, you know, in Chicago here, our the way that our company just kind of operates is pretty much all cloud-based. So we don't really have any, uh, there's nothing in our office that we need um, in terms of servers or anything like that, or, you know, things that we can't do remotely just from our own laptop. So we have, uh, you know, everyone is on a laptop, either being, at, you know, a Mac or Windows or mostly Chromebooks, actually. And um, we can just work from anywhere, essentially. And I've been uh, working these last few weeks from, from home, not in the office, uh, pretty much every day now for the last month. Right, okay. Alex, you were gonna add some comments? Yeah, I was just gonna mention that we're in Florida, so every one of our employees has a laptop and a headset that we provide. So yeah, because of hurricanes, we're basically uh, expecting, uh, you know, offices to shut down for weeks at a time. So it's not, not really much we're doing here, just reminding people that they have that option and it's preferred, you know. Right. So, so being in, in one of those, those areas where you are prone to natural, to, to a natural disaster, like a hurricane or, you know, some of the cities that, that get uh, extreme cold, like for our Minneapolis office is, you know, always, always gets used to having periods of time where they're working from home. Has that really, really helped people? And this, this Corona, COVID nineteen virus is not too much of a strain on 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 the way that people are working. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's just you know waiting, listening, seeing if there's a reason for immediate concern, and then if there is, we all go home. Like, okay, no big deal. Okay. Anybody else got? I imagine that it's really popular. I imagine that this situation is really quite similar to to any other natural disaster where you can't be in the office, um, except that this one is um, affecting anyone who travels, uh, basically. Except, and this is a little bit more widespread. But in terms of a response that a company is gonna require to do, um, I think it's pretty much uh, the same uh, in in these cases. Uh, except that we cancel travel. <laughs> um, yes, but we in so, Germany actually we're not really we're not really prepared for um, natural disasters like these. We we don't have hurricanes. We don't have anything like that. That's right. just, so um, just our... just seeing the logo on your jacket pop up in the in the camera. I see it's a a Google Cloud, of course, Rosie's travel in April has been disrupted because Next has been changed from being a, a, an on-site conference to a virtual one. And then uh, Okta have canceled Octane. Um, and I'm trying to think what else has been canceled. Facebook canceled theirs for, you know, later on in April. I know some of the smaller ones in right, so small conferences that I knew of in New York are being canceled. I always canceled Google I/O as well. I actually have two conferences. AWS has started canceling too. Yeah. Right. Sorry, what was that, Alex? Uh, AWS has started canceling conferences also. Right. Okay. Okay. And Rose, you were saying? All right. I have two conferences in April that aren't canceled yet, um, but they're both. Uh, it's really fascinating because they're both offering like additional like refund options that they normally don't. And like, we're anticipating that the conferences will be a lot smaller. I'm on the committee for one of them. Okay. And so it's not a technology conference though. So, um, but yeah, like we're anticipating a much smaller event because of the travel advisories. And I mean, mostly, you know, people are kind of just saying, well, wash your hands. <laughs> Yeah, do the, do the do the elbow uh, shake. 
Like yeah. Sort of shaking hands, you just touch elbows. Right. Or like the. It's really entertaining to me. <laughs> it's really entertaining to me that people are like, well, you know, the numbers are dropping in China, so it's got to be running its course. Like, yeah, but China shut everything down. Like, everything had to stop yeah, in order for them to get that. Productivity. Yeah, like, it costs some money. Yeah. Uh, well, but that's so the thing, weird. right? It does, it costs money to shut everything down. So that's part of the business continuity plan, right? And the ability to work from home in the first place. If you're not ready to work from home, kind of screwed because oh, totally. you're going to lose your company so much money if you can't work. Well, like we were talking on the Slack yeah, show yesterday, if, if your company's not remote forward first, there's no way that IT can be completely remote. Like, there's just no way. Right. Yeah, because we were talking about the like, actual IT people being remote and it's yeah. very difficult yeah. to be fully remote, but... So that's my that was a question I I have and you know within our our organization I've got uh, four managers or five managers you know who can who parts of their job can be done at home um, obviously you know large part of my job can be done at home I'm at home at the moment and then there's you know all of the sort of the first line engineers which you know naturally most of the things that they do physically with laptops has to be done on site. So have you, how have you guys, have you thought about how you would operate and how those first line support SAS ops engineers maybe would be, would be uh, helped, monitored, managed if, you know, we, we did have to work from home for the, the rest of March? We've uh, we put. I think the internal. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Blair. You got a better beard. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is technically the rule that whoever has the better beard goes first. Uh, I, I've shaved mine, so I'm a bit too small now. So that's good. Oh my gosh, so funny. Um, no, I think it's funny. Like the internal IT teams kind of have to steal a little bit of from uh, from an MSP and almost operate like an MSP within the organization, right? And if you kind of adopt that thought process and model or whatever okay great so now we're going to implement you know strong mdm controls we're going to spend some money for a good rmm solution that's going to let us remotely do all this stuff for our users okay we're going to make sure that everything's under service contract so if something hardware related we're going to ship it off to fill in the blank var or hardware reseller or whatever i think if you have that structure set up and you know i know from experience that if you set it up like that intentionally then yeah remote works great but you can't set all that stuff up at like a like turnkey. <laughs> That's some serious work and strategy and planning and money. Right. Yes. Yeah. And also a skill set as well, because I think it does take a different. I've, I've worked on a telephone help desk, and you know, you you are you are a detective. You've you know you've got to ask uh, a lot of questions because you can't see stuff. Um, how do you, how do other people think their departments are going to do? You know, not without giving any any company information out. Uh, have you done any additional uh, training or with your teams? You know, Sean Rose. I don't know how big if you if you support teams. Alex, who else is on the call? Brian. Mike. I mean, yeah, I have. No, go ahead. You're right. My my beard's bigger. Um. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Uh, yeah, we, <laughs> we have about a 30% remote workforce. Uh, so we've got some fairly good experience in doing that as well. We're not 100% set up like an MSP. Uh, right. The big, the big uh, things I'm thinking about is, um, let's say we do shut down offices. Like we're, we're, I'm trying to stage a recommended response that's basically in two phases. Phase one is anyone who wants to work from home can. I don't know what the trigger for that is. We may have already passed it. We may not have. Um, and then uh, I'm committing as, as the leader of my IT team to have one person in the office. Uh, so I have four people on my team and two offices to support. So one person working from home, one person in the office. I'll probably take a rotation in there as well uh, to let my people work from home as well. Um, and then stage two is you get no support. You want to come to the office, that's up to you. You want to go to Costco, same thing, that's up to you but you're getting nothing from us. We're not gonna have snacks for you. We're not gonna give you a new keyboard. When that happens, the big, the big thing that's gonna be really hard for us to respond to is what happens if someone's laptop fails. 
Yes. Like what if their if their so, if their keyboard fails? Funny, it's a built-in one. So uh, then I, I I'm actually thinking. Like of, <laughs> I'm actually thinking about having about fifteen or so laptops and power supplies in my house because I'm close to a UPS store, and just you know prepping them up to be replacements and be like, sorry, I can't do anything for you, but tomorrow you'll have a new one. Right. Yeah. So, that's so the way to go. I thought about that because we we've considered that um, our our team is fully empowered to work remotely um, as much as they want, but in general, the help desk team, the like straight up support team, has to work from the office three to four days a week, unless they have like an illness or a doctor's appointment or whatever. And so one of the things though is when I first started working from home and I was working on laptops and stuff, it made me really uncomfortable to bring people's laptops home to my house because I was just like, I don't know that I have the insurance for this, <laughs> right? Does my work insurance cover this? I don't know. Like what happens if somebody's data is compromised in my house? Like it made me really nervous. So I try not to do it. And so we really have restructured our, the way we think about laptops in that we provide loaners for as long as you need them and the loaners are blank, right? So. The other part is that my office can be accessed without it touching a single human being. And so even if they shut down the office, I'll still have key card access 24 seven. So if I need to get in my car and go to my office and I can get up to my office without encountering another human being to access our laptop stock and send stuff to FedEx, right? Then, I mean, I think that's the approach that we take to that because I don't know, I, I think everybody's risk tolerance is a little bit different, but like, because everybody's insurance is also a little bit different. But like, I was really genuinely uncomfortable servicing people's laptops at my home. Yeah, and I'll agree to that when in a perfect world and in that my IT pass, like an ideal state was we didn't do any hardware work, like all hardware stuff was shipped out. So, and our users, and again, this is in like an ideal SaaS ops state, our users knew that anything on their laptop was churn and burn, right? If you were having a laptop an issue, like my help guys could remotely wipe your machine and get you set up fresh with a fresh image. And then we, they would do that constantly. And hey, it wasn't that big of an impact because all your shit's in the cloud and everything's automatically connected and you are provisioned and blah, 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 blah. So I think, you know, in an ideal state, none of these things or all of these things are solvable. It's just, it, you know, ideal state takes so much money and time <laughs> that none of our higher ups are willing to do that for, you know, this specific reason. Well, until they have to deal with a disaster, usually. Till we get budget right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if, if this does turn into being... For us, it's really interesting. Okay, Dominic, go ahead. Okay. Uh, for us, it's really interesting as we are 100% remote. And if something fails in your setup, um, well, you've got a credit card. Uh, Get a new laptop, and um, it's expensed. And we'll we'll see what we can do with the with the current one. And then, as long as you can keep working, um, that's our main important thing in these cases. Right. Yeah. So th that that is okay for some smaller companies. Larger companies that often is is not allowed due to SOX yeah. compliance or finance control. Well, not SOX compliance, but finance controls. Um, yeah, I did. Uh, sure, it just popped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. I didn't think we we're going to have to make Blair not not show the uh, the sunny countryside again when he's when he's moving around. There we go. No, no. sorry, sorry. Is that better? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah. It's rough living down here in SoCal, that's, guys. That's it's real you. rough. So uh, I I wanted to pose the question to everybody: um, if this if this is you know, 30, 60, maybe 90 days of homework uh, or working from home. Um, has anybody thought about what to do with new starters, uh, new joiners, and also people leaving and how they, they might be dealt with remotely? I mean, we deal with that already. Because when you're like 80% remote, you do have to handle that. I will say for onboarding, we still do have people come into the office usually for their first week, but not always. And so like we're we're prepared to do all of that over Zoom. 
Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is just a really good negotiated FedEx deal. I'll be honest, <laughs> right? Like we have handouts that we include with laptops. We have, you know, email templates that go out. Like there's all kinds of stuff. And then everybody kind of understands the process. Like HR yeah. is put to handle a remote onboard and offboard. And um, I don't know. It, but it can be tough because remotely it can be a little bit harder to track people down to say like, hey, you need to return this or like, hey, can we find time to get together and have me walk you through some stuff or, you know, or sometimes when people start remotely and they don't, they haven't worked remotely a lot before, they will hold their support needs which is something that we see with users, remote users all the time. They'll hold their support needs until they can see you face to face. And we really, really wanna encourage a culture where that doesn't happen because in this situation, right? If you're working remotely either full time or like for the next foreseeable future, stuff's gonna come up and you should address it now. You shouldn't just wait because otherwise we'll be really, really sad when we all have to go back to the office. Yes, it will be really strange if if you if you were to join a company and then be you know working with somebody for you know one or two months and then finally meeting them. But uh, you know, thankfully with Hangouts, you would think or Zoom or any other video conferencing, you would at least think that they would have you know had the ability to to meet people face to face. Um, the one thing that that we've considered with you know obviously in that period there would be would be staff leaving and depending on the severity of the you know of, of the outbreak or you know what's considered right you know with with any you know uh, equipment that somebody might have if they if they have suffered from the from the illness depending on the age of the machine we might just write it off you know if if somebody's been with us for two years i've only got a year left on that on that laptop is am i going to issue it to somebody else again probably not you know, it's probably too much hassle getting the person to return it. We would just, you know, consider it to be, you know, written off, remote, remote wipe it, and um, you know, mark it down as lost in the order. Yeah, in my MSP days, we had a bunch of like remote forward rows, kind of similar to you, where like it was remote first, and you could come to the office almost secondarily. Um, and for their remote forces, there was like two different trains of thought. One was. No, you're given a laptop. Like this laptop is part of your benefits package. I guess we manage it right now, but when either it reaches end of life or you leave, like we remove it from our MDM and that belongs to you now. Or the, um, you know, it's in your contract that, you know, that belongs to the company. If you take it after we fire you or you leave, we duck, you know, deduct it from your final paycheck. So I've seen it done like both of those ways. Right. Yeah. That, and that, that would only work in certain states because obviously you can't do that. In right in some states yep. so yeah we've we've uh i've also been preparing advice like we have a lot of remote workers they're good at working remote the people that have been coming to the office every day for years are suddenly going to have to develop a new skill set again i just dropped in the sas ops channel uh some super evil megacorps uh advice on how to work remote which i totally didn't just read because of the cool name um but they have some good thoughts <laughs> in there i thought about like how to be responsive turn the biggest one i think is just turn on your camera like just oh. every time unless your oh, your housemate is naked out, in the background <laughs> i mean i'm not blaming dominic because he turns it on sometimes i'm just saying dominic i can't see your face and i feel less <laughs> of a connection to you and your lack of beard i think i think dominic has to turn it off sometimes to save bandwidth that's true Oh no, he's eating. He's having his dinner. That's why. <laughs> People always turn off their camera while they're eating. Like it's not a human thing that we all do. I'll turn on my camera now. <laughs> yes, there you go, Brian. <laughs> nice to meet you, called out over here. Yeah. Excellent. I feel like that's another topic about like etiquette for working from home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a great doc, uh, the Super Evil Megal Corp. I'll uh, try and remember to be one of those good people and put it in uh, in the notes, um, in the comments um, section of, of YouTube when we post this video because those things don't appear um, in the video. Uh, but it is a very good question about, you know, supporting and, and the, the changing environment for those people who, you know, aren't used to working remotely, um, you know, a very 
you know, very set on, you know, connecting to the file server still, if you have one opening that, you know, Excel document, now you've got to, you know, make sure they can get on the, the VPN and then, you know, resolve all of those, those issues. Um, and then it is the, you know, the, the, the culture of, which for a lot of us, you know, if we've been using Hangouts since it was since it was first launched, you know, we love the fact that we can, you know, talk and see other people. Um, but I think for a lot of people, you know, that is a, a cultural shift because I do see a lot of people, even in the organization that I work, um, you know, where they don't have their, their camera turned on. Um, or if there is an option for a video call, they'll still dial in. Obviously, Alex has dialed in on this, but you know, that's to allow for some, some flexibility to move around, which is you know, always a good thing. Um, <clears throat> with thinking about, you know, as you've all been thinking about your business continuity plans and DR and the remote workforce, what, what do you think is missing from the, t the current toolkit that we have, um, you know, with regards to Slack, Zoom, G Suite, is there any, is there any think that you think that could be added or that is missing to really improve, um, uh, sort of the remote working? I, I I know of a couple of things that I would love. Some of them are, I guess, slowly I have, coming. Um, I have been searching for a reasonably priced one touch deployment that is platform agnostic. Oh, it's a, it's like a, a unicorn. Right. <laughs> Wait, platform exactly. or OS agnostic or both? OS agnostic. Okay. Yeah. So, but that's the thing is like, we don't want a platform. Like we don't want to basically end up in like remote de or remote desktop services kind of stuff. And so we really want people to not be doing that. And then, but one of the hardest things is it still does take like two or three hours <clears throat> to set up a laptop because yeah. we don't have any kind of remote deployment options, right? Like somebody, we have to install our software and we don't have a way to push it out unless you install at least one of them. All of them can get the job done, but like you have to install the first one in order to deploy the rest. Right. Yeah, and that's the hardest part for us. So, but yeah, everybody's like, oh, look at like AirWatch or look at these other EMM services. And I'm like, yeah, those are really expensive. Well, they save you three hours a device. Yeah, it's not that. <laughs> it's not that much. <laughs> <laughs> that, because I mean, that would, to, like, yeah. Because I've gotten a zero touch across OSs when you're not just doing one or the other um, is Ripley. Um, but that's like half platform, half MSP. I mean, yeah. you know, now you're talking, you're basically paying help desk level. 0 0.5 <laughs> like it's not really a, a true solve either right anybody else to, yeah to, to rose's point earlier this has caused us to start to think about uh how we're going to manage hardware uh we can certainly we can get it to people for for new hires we ship kind of uh, direct from a um uh, a partner there but if we're talking about folks who are leaving us and need to get stuff back to us if we're not there to receive it. Um, yeah. it's, ca it's caused me to want to go and knock on a few doors of, of places that I know that are 100% uh, distributed teams um, and, and just see how they manage that. But if there was some sort of effort to do it, because Rose brought up a good point that I was not even considering. It's like sitting here with a pile of, of laptops and having $20,000 worth of uh, hardware sitting in your home does not make me feel comfortable anymore. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it was a little bit of a surprise when I moved into my new apartment, actually, and I got my new renter's insurance, and they were asking me about, like, you know, do I have, like, work laptops and work equipment at home? And I was like, actually, yes. So I had to bump up my, my renter's insurance because of that. And I was like, I'm not prepared for, you know, an additional three laptops, much less, like, five or ten. Right, yeah. I guess it is, you know, if you are a renter to a homeowner, I guess there is a, you know, they're, they're, the, the situation will be different as well. Um, you know, and also if you think, you know, is your house going to get burgled or burned down? Um, you know, 
and, and one well, of the and chunks a, of a disaster recovery situation, right? You have yeah. to be prepared that you might be swept up in that disaster. So even though you're prepared to work from home, what yeah. happens if not only your office is destroyed, but your home is destroyed too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is. Yeah. I think that was the problem with a lot of companies in um, Hurricane Sandy because, yes, they were based in New York, but they had their data center in Secaucus. Um, Secaucus, New Jersey got flooded, um, you know, and bang goes your, your data center. Um, yeah, you do it. You know, it's like if you're having redundant Internet connections into your office, you've got to make sure they're going, you know, through specific dedicated different paths of the building and out different streets, um, you know, and not just through the, the, the same conduit because that, that's not redundant. But yes, yeah, so that's a that is a good point, Rose, <clears throat> in your in your DR plan. Um, any other comments, tidbits, questions to share? um chris is on there if he want if you want to join in you don't have to if you want to just listen who else is brian you've you have anything else to add Any uh, yeah so i i used to support uh, i guess uh, remote offices at, at my old job so these are typically like warehouses spread all across canada so uh, we didn't have any, I guess, in, during my tenure there, I didn't really have any disasters to deal with, but definitely like ha having to help someone remotely, I think was a big challenge for us because A, they didn't really know what they were doing. They're not really a tech savvy people. So like what we do is we ship all the desktops to uh, our head office and we'll like set it up and send it out. Luckily, we didn't have any hardware problems, but if it were, it were the case again, like uh, something were to happen, then yeah, we'll have to instruct them to oh go buy this model from from like a local store bring it in connect to the internet download the software and then we'll get it set up so i think having a plan would be definitely helpful right yeah yeah I, i've just been looking through the list of, of of people who had joined and it is very interesting that the out of all of us the only one who is actually in an office is sean so like <laughs> the other <laughs> There are like 10 of us on this call are already working remotely. Um, and I'm assuming your companies haven't already decided that, uh, you know, it is uh, everybody is mandatory working from home. Um, but just with your, your roles or the companies that you, you work for, you're able to, to do that. There's, there's a little bit of jealousy. So I'm in San Francisco and so, you know, all the things are getting canceled, all the conferences are getting canceled and Twitter and all these people are saying work from home. And so people are coming up to me like, hey, can we start working from home? Just ask your manager about that. But there is a weird like, like I wish there was some better trigger. Like San Francisco could say, hey, okay, now it's time to work from home. And then everyone can just decide at the same time as opposed to, I don't know, there's some weird jealousy stuff that I think happens when people are like, well, they're all working from home. Like, in that have multiple locations, that's even harder, right? Because like some place that's been really badly affected might just say, okay, like we're gonna have everybody work from home in this office and in all of our other offices. Well, if your other offices are in places that aren't affected, yeah, there's definitely, it's a differential. I don't know. I don't feel like the Oregon government has been particularly prescriptive. Um, so I think we're just kind of playing it by ear, which is really rough because we've had our own, we've had three or four confirmed cases now, not very far from where we work. Um, I feel like, I don't know, whole, I, I, I don't want to trust local governments because I think they're bad at that stuff. <laughs> but I do wish there was some a more coordinated response. Well, it doesn't help us. The whole issue has been so heavily politicized where you've almost got one side of the political spectrum going this is a hoax and the other side of the political spectrum going we need more you know shenanigans so now you've got people making health decisions based on politics and who they believe in the media which is really not helping the situation at all um, there's to, to add to that i mean this is just my prediction you can all hold me to it in a couple months but at some point we're going to have effective tests that are maybe as good as north korea's um, if we can get to that level of technology, I don't know why we're not there yet. Uh, for instance, San Francisco was given 430 tests, right? Test kits. So unless you just came from Wuhan, they're not testing you, right? 
when those ch tests are cheap and free and reliable, they're going to test everyone. And we're going to go from three cases to 30,000 overnight. And people will see those nice big numbers and freak out. And that's, that's actually what I'm more afraid of than the virus itself. Like, I'm not afraid of getting the flu. Um, hopefully, I'll be fine, knock on wood, whatever. But when the people start panicking, raiding Costco, I, that is going there, to get... There's no hand sanitizer within 50 miles of Portland right now. Yeah. You cannot buy it. You cannot buy any cleaning products. Fred Meyer has limited people to five disinfectant type cleaning products a day. You can't buy any more than that because we're experiencing some massive shortages and stuff. So, and it's really funny. So I think, I think actually the hardest part, so I, you're just reflecting for, back just, on- It's Steve a real quick to interrupt Rose. For those of you that have never been to Oregon, Fred Meyer is basically like Walmart only. Yeah, yeah. We have Walmart too, but Fred Meyer is the new Walmart. <laughs> um, Let me bring in a different perspective. So we are all of, lucky that we are office-based uh, companies and we do we, I don't think anyone here in the call is supporting people that actually do have to be at their workplace because of their way of work um, my dad um, he works in a company where he is producing paper so right. the paper That's machine the paper mill only works when people are there and they um they get different. They get a whole lot of a different um, level of disaster uh, ability or disaster um, impact. If they can't come there, they have to maybe shut down the entire plant, which actually takes twenty four hours to shut down and twenty four hours to restart again. So, you're I think yeah, quite it's lucky. It's very different to support like an in-person industry. And just like we were just talking about at the very beginning, right? China shut down large parts of their country and it really affected their economy. Our economy is already being affected because of the panic. So I almost wonder, you know, I know it's very expensive for these corporations to do that stuff and for manufacturing organizations to do that stuff. But I almost wonder is it worth it if we can if we prevent more community outbreaks i don't know it's it's hard because i was yeah and i was literally going to say right before that dominic thinking back to my previous jobs which were a lot more in person even if my company wanted to <laughs> say like oh don't work if you're sick or you know like we should think about like transitioning non-essential workers to home. Like those mechanisms weren't even in place because the industry was so, I worked in telecommunications. The industry was very in person. What do you do with that? Right, yeah, yeah. I think we are, we are very lucky that we are predominantly serving I guess information companies, mm -hmm. or or the the bulk of the people that we're supporting, you know, are are um, right. aren't, aren't doing something physical like Dominic said. His father's doing, you know, paper manufacturing. Um, you know, so yeah, we are we are relatively lucky. Um, yeah. Just, just all laughing at, uh, at uh, John's little uh, chat pop up. I should have specified telecommunications retail. <laughs> retail. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, re remote remote working doesn't uh, doesn't work, and uh, G Suite, Office three sixty five, Slack, Zoom, everything else doesn't solve for those uh, those remote problems. So, um, for those uh, those retail work. Uh, all right, well, we're getting up to the the forty five minute mark, and I I always like to end it there because um, I like these discussions to be short and and, and I, maybe in I guess short and sweet, short and intense. Um, I hope we've all gone away and, and learned something. I think Rose and Sean, you've learned that you need to remind your users to take home their their headsets, especially if they're doing calls at home because um, laptop audio isn't great um, 
you know, uh, I was on a, a, a call this morning and uh, one of the people there is working from home and the, her laptop audio wasn't very good. So, you know, I'm going to find a, 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 sep, a, a, a spare um, microphone speaker, Jabra unit for them to use for when they're, they're working from home. So the quality is better because that, that will be the one thing that, um, you know, is always maybe potentially sometimes overlooked, but it is very, very important, you know, having good audio um yeah dominic's got his uh his bluetooth headset there so it's been charged it's been charged and now, and now it'll work okay. <laughs> yeah yeah that's the problem with bluetooth, with bluetooth it uh always needs to be charged that's why i like i like cables and stuff you just plug them in and they work um all right i i would it would be great if if in carrying on in the better it slack channel if people do have Good templates, or I've seen open um, open letters around the internet, or um, any other guidance about you know uh, business continuity, uh, remote working. You know, please share them with everybody. I'll try and scoop them out and uh, and and put them in the in the comments or in the notes down below. But um, we will see everybody in another two weeks. I, I did finally set up a recurring calendar event, so. We can uh, we can keep these going on, and then we'll uh, hopefully hopefully life will be will start to get a little bit quieter. I we always hope for that, don't we? But there's always something in IT to to get in our way, um, and we can start to do some some more structured uh, discussions and um, and have sort of some more more topics. But it seems like a topic always comes up every week anyway, so. All right, stay well, everybody. Thank you for joining in your time. I hope those listening uh, live to the, the recording found the conversation interesting. And uh, remember, don't touch your face and wash your hands for 20 seconds. And if you want to get out of everybody, you're coughing a lot. Wash your thumbs, <laughs> too. Wash your thumbs. Yeah, people forget about their thumbs because they're above in the water. <laughs> oh. That was actual advice from the CDC. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this fake news? <laughs> this Thanks, is guys. The, Good luck out there. This is the most important piece of information. <laughs> the whole discussion. <laughs> You're telling me for 47 years, these thumbs have not been washed. If you're not like rubbing them into your palms or something, you know? <laughs> I'm going to have to evaluate how I wash my hands. <laughs> else watch, your, watch yourself wash your hands the next time. <laughs> Questioning everything. What is real? <laughs> See you, everybody. Happy See you guys. Bye.